Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and before me I have a couple different types of phones with different types of displays, and what I want to talk about today is the truth about AMOLED versus LCD, but before I do that there's a fun melodramatic little disclaimer that I want to read to you all because I realize that videos like this can cause quite volatile reactions, so here we have it right here. It says, the following content is meant for educational purposes only. It is not meant to cause anger, aggressiveness, or gnashing of teeth. It is not meant to cause envy, boastfulness, or fanboyisms of any kind. Everyone is entitled to his or her own opinion or preference as what I am about to show you is really about a matter of taste. So that was fun. Let's move on. So for my little guinea pigs for this video, I have the HTC One, I've got a Galaxy S4, I've also got two LG G2s for two very different markets. This is the AT&T version for the American market, and this is the Korean version for the Korean market. And I really wanted to thank Negri Electronics for sending this device out to me to look at. It's been very helpful in this video. If you're looking for unlocked devices that aren't on carriers, or even if you want a carrier device, I recommend going over and looking at what Negri Electronics has. I have bought from them before. They are a very excellent company. They have really excellent customer service. And they are a company that I really trust to get my devices from. So thank you Negri for sending this out to me to look at. So, when talking about AMOLED versus LCD displays and which one is better, which one's more pretty, which one's more accurate, which one's more natural, there's just so much information floating around out there. And the most annoying thing that I am hearing from bloggers and different media channels is that LCD displays have an added advantage over AMOLED because they are more natural, or dare I say, some say more accurate. Is that true? Are LCD displays more accurate than AMOLED? Well, in general, yes, it's very true that this can be more accurate and this can be more natural looking, especially if calibrated correctly. The reason for that is that all the content that we see these days, whether it be on the internet, whether it be your operating system, whether it be the operating system on your Android or your iPhone, it's all based around this one color range or gamut, color gamut, that is called sRGB or standard RGB. So since the LCD display color range is matching with the sRGB color range, things can look more natural than what you see on AMOLED displays, because AMOLED displays are able to display a very large range of colors, much larger than sRGB. So when you take sRGB content and display it on an AMOLED display, things can look really oversaturated. It's a problem right now because we don't have any type of color management on AMOLED displays or wider gamut displays. And color management would help take those very saturated colors that you're seeing on an AMOLED display and make it look the way it's supposed to or not so saturated. But right now nobody is doing that. Another thing about AMOLED, and it looks like Samsung is finally getting a clue about this, is that not only does it already have a wider gamut and can make some sRGB content look really oversaturated, Samsung would take the saturations that are already further than sRGB and they would saturate it even more! So it would take colors and completely destroy them and make them look almost neon and it would make people really angry. At least with the Galaxy S4, I'm seeing that Samsung is really not doing that anymore Thank goodness. So things can look oversaturated, but it's not the terrible mess that I've seen that gave AMOLED such a bad reputation. So companies know this about color management, they know that AMOLED is very punchy, and they also know that some people don't want that. They don't want colors that look like toy candy colors. So they really upplay the LCD display and say that it is just so much more natural, some of them saying accurate, than AMOLED. So that's all great and all right, but people like really punchy colors. That and a lot of people really like Samsung, and these LCD displayed companies want to have something that competes. So what do they do? They take the calibration, and instead of having it be natural like it's supposed to be and like they're advertising, they oversaturate it horribly to where it looks very much like AMOLED. But when they do that, it is not accurate anymore, and it's just hilarious. So that's something that I want to show you with all these displays. I'm not saying that it can't look pretty and that it can't deliver a very awesome experience, a lot like what people like on AMOLED, but how dare some companies try to say that it is accurate. Natural? Fine. Who's to say what natural really is? But accurate? That's not so good at all. Let's go and take a look. 
Now here before me, we have the three different displays. We have the LG G2 that has an IPS display. We have the Galaxy S4 with a Super AMOLED display. And then we have the HTC One that has a Super LCD 3 display, which in any other term can be considered an IPS display. You can see that all of them have excellent viewing angles. And if you're comparing the colors side by side, you're just like, wow, they look very, very similar to what we can see on the Galaxy S4. So no, these guys are not AMOLED, but you can just see that the saturations and the vibrancy of the colors just look so similar. So to the eye, people are like, wow, you know, that's, that's excellent. LCD screens are getting better. But like I've been mentioning, it has to do with the saturations of the colors, which is the overall calibration. The biggest difference between the LCD displays and the AMOLED display is the type of technology behind them. When looking at LCD displays, the displays themselves don't emit any light. There's actually a backlight behind both of these LCD displays that shines through filters in the display. And as you know about displays, there are pixels. Every pixel has three subpixels, red, green, and blue. So when the light shines through those red, green, and blue pixels, if you combine red, green, and blue at different intensities, then you get all the different colors that you're able to see. AMOLED is much different as that it has OLED, which is organic LED, and an LED is a light emitting diode. So the screen itself emits light. So it doesn't need a backlight at all. The thing with the backlights is that it is the single most important part of the display. Because if you don't have a backlight that's allowing to have the most pure colors possible, then you can end up with washed out colors. But AMOLED displays don't have to deal with the backlight, they don't have to deal with any filters, they don't have to deal with getting the colors just right. With OLED displays, you already have light emitting diodes that are emitting very monochromatic colors, red, green, and blue. And the more pure those colors are, the wider gamut or the wider range of colors you can display. So that is why AMOLED has such a wide gamut. So LCDs are able to emulate AMOLED by having a backlight that allows the display to have a wide enough gamut, such as sRGB or beyond, and then the companies oversaturate at will. So now we're moving on to look at some measurements that I have taken with the color emitter of all the displays. The first one that we are looking at is of the LG G2 because LG seems to be the biggest offender here to try to get their display to look very close to AMOLED with oversaturating. I just find it hilarious because LG was the direct offender who said inside of their own press release that the colors are accurate. No, no LG, no they're not, you know they're not and you decided to say that they're accurate anyway. Blatant lie. Cool. So what are we looking at here and how do you interpret it? Like I said, this is a measurement of the LG G2. This is actually a gamut measurement of the LG G2 and it's looking at the color saturations as well. So there's this funny looking shape that we have here and this is actually the gamut or the range of colors that your eyes are able to see. And then inside of it are two triangles. You see that there is a white outlined one and there is a black outlined one. The black outlined one is sRGB gamut. That is the color range that I've been talking about this entire time. The white outline triangle is the gamut or the color range that the LG G2 is able to display. You can see that it's a little bit wider than sRGB, particularly in green. That's actually not a bad thing at all as it just means that you're gonna have a wider range of greens. The bad thing that we're looking at here is the massive oversaturation that LG is trying to use to make it look like the AMOLED displays. So you will probably notice that inside of this triangle there are a bunch of colored dots. These colored dots represent the color saturations of the display. So you can see that you have color saturations for red, green, and blue. Those are your primary colors. And then there's the secondary colors, yellow, magenta, and cyan. Now I can tell that they're blatantly oversaturating because these colored dots are supposed to be evenly spaced. Look at green, for example. You actually have five colored dots per color. There's one in the very center that represents 0% or there's no color there. The second one is 25%. The third one is 50%. The fourth one is 75%. And the fifth one is 100% or the highest range of green that the display is able to show. So if you can see here with all of the colors, they're not evenly spaced at all. Green is horribly oversaturated. So just say that you have a color that's supposed to be 50% green or showing about half the green that the display is able to show. Instead of it being where it's supposed to be, that green is going to look like 75% green. So if you think about it, a color that's supposed to have 50% green that has 75% green instead ends up looking very much too green for what it's supposed to display. The same thing goes with all the other colors. So LG, I have to ask, in what way is this accurate? 
I know seeing this is going to make a lot of people a little bit frustrated because the LG G2 is a phone that a lot of people are very excited about at this moment. People have been saying absolutely wonderful things about this display. Then they're going to look at what I'm saying here and just say, no, I haven't heard this before. But you can see it right before your eyes. This is actually what they're doing. And I also have a measurement from the AT&T version as well. The first one is from the Korean version. And if I look over at the AT&T version, I can see that the saturations that they're putting in place is exactly the same. So yes, this is intentional. Now let's go over and look at the Galaxy S4. As you can see here, yes, it has a very much wider gamut as I was telling you, but look at the saturations. Yes, the saturations are past sRGB and that's what's causing it to look oversaturated, but you can see here, look at the greens. They're actually perfectly spaced, aren't they? I can see that they're maybe oversaturating just a tad bit on the blues and reds, but it's not bad at all. Now for our last example, there are other things that can be done to displays besides super saturating that can get the display to pop. So when looking at the CIE diagram of the HTC One, we can see that there is definitely something going on as well. Now if you notice, the saturations are not as bad as what you see on the G2, they're not as extreme at all. But I can see that the colored dots are not evenly spaced. I can see that red is oversaturated a little bit and so is blue. And then I look at something like green and yellow and it looks like they are both oversaturating and undersaturating. So the next thing that I can look at is the gamma chart. Now how you read this is you look at it as shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now shadows are going to be very, very dark colors, shadows, blacks. And if you look at midtones, it's going to be more along the lines of skin tones. And if you look at highlights, you're getting into near white or whites. So with the HTC One, if you look at shadows, they are boosting gamma. When you boost gamma, it's going to make the image darker, but it's also immediately going to make things more saturated. And it's the reverse effect if you take gamma and make it lower. Low gamma is going to brighten an image, but it's going to make the color saturations go downward, and it can make things wash out if it's too extreme. Since they've made gamma so high in shadows, basically instead of having a gradient that's near black where you can see varying shadow, it turns everything black because they've made it too dark. And then I've noticed that some things look a little bit washed out on the HTC One and it doesn't help that they have added a feature called dynamic contrast, which is supposed to change the contrast depending on what you're looking at. But I notice it's just kind of helping the colors look more washed out, particularly in midtones and highlights. So you can see that there's a lot of different things that companies do to take away from the naturalness and the accuracy of LCD screens in favor of making it look punchy, making the colors pop. The general consensus is that it looks nice. If it's done right, at least it can be an experience, but it's definitely not accurate. And it's up to you whether you think it looks natural or not. An inherent difficulty of AMOLED technology that I feel needs to be expressed in our little journey that we're having here into the depths of AMOLED and LCD technology is that LCD displays are a little bit more robust. The problem that we have with light emitting diodes is that they emit lights by themselves. They're like little light bulbs and like light bulbs will end up doing eventually, they start to dim or they will burn out. Like I said, displays are made up of pixels and every pixel has three subpixels, red, green, and blue. Now you can see here that we have red, green, and blue. So when I hit the red, this is just a diagnostics within the Samsung phone, I'm only activating the red subpixels. If I go back outward, hit green, I'm only activating the green subpixels. Then if I go under blue, of course, I'm only activating the blue subpixels. The thing here is that the blue subpixels or the blue color wavelength is the most high energy of all the other ones. So what ends up happening is that if you have your display on something like an image, and if that image does not move, just say like the status bar, there's a line right here, or if you have a text box, or if you have a keyboard, that keyboard stays there for a very long time if you're somebody who's texting a lot. The blue subpixels, since they're the most high energy, they start to run down the quickest. So you get something that's called blue subpixel burn-in over time. So if you're somebody who's texting a lot, those poor little blue subpixels end up wearing down over time. And on some images, you end up seeing lines. You can end up actually seeing ghosting or burn-in lines. Now, I haven't had this phone for very long and I've used a lot of other phones in between, but I've had my Galaxy Note and my poor Galaxy Note had a very obvious burn-in line whenever I looked at blue. And I could also actually make out keys on the keyboard. It was actually that bad. There are times where this is not so obvious and no, the image does not have to be 
all blue in order to see the burn-in, but over time, blue pixel burn-in ends up being there and there's really not much that you can do to get rid of it, especially when you have something like a status bar. So if you're somebody who's texting a lot or you have static images all the time, I recommend more or less going with an LCD screen because with LCD screens, you're not gonna get blue pixel burn-in. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I also have a website, angeloftech.com. If you'd like to, you can go over there and check it out. I have some forums if you want to ask questions. That's probably the best way to have them answered. I hope I've been able to help you decide which display technology that you like best. I hope I've helped you get a good understanding of what's going on with these displays and why they look saturated or why one display will look different than another. It all has to do with the gamut of the display or the range of colors it can produce and also the saturation of the colors in calibration. If you want to know what my type of favorite display is, it has to be LCD, one that's properly calibrated that doesn't have all that nonsense over saturation. Sorry, AMOLED, I really do like you, but that blue pixel burn-in really breaks the deal for me. Have a good night, everybody.